Okay, so hey guys, welcome back to another predictions video, and in today's video, I'm going to be predicting the O'Malley versus Vera rematch. If you are new around here though, and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you do indeed like the video, and let's get straight into it. So, going into this fight, O'Malley is 17 and 1 with 12 KOs and one submission, and Vera is 23 8 and 1 with 8 KOs and 10 submissions. This fight is for the UFC bantamweight title. O'Malley's last fight was a win via KO in round 2 versus Sterling, and Vera's last fight was a win via unanimous decision versus Munoz. This is in O'Malley's home country of America, and the first fight ended with Vera winning via KO in round 1 back in 2020. Vera's UFC losses have come versus Beltran in 2014. Grant in 2016, Lineker in 2017, DeAndre in 2018, Yadong in 2020, Aldo in 2020 and Sandhagen in 2023. And to speak a bit more about what I've just been saying there, obviously like I say this is for the UFC Bantamweight title, O'Malley's first defence of the title which he won in that of emphatic fashion versus Sterling, uh, I believe the end time of last year and you know it's nice to see him back in the octagon he's always entertaining in the build-ups and everything like that and you know he has been again and in this kind of rematch it's the fight which was always going to happen as soon as O'Malley you know if he did become champion it was always going to be the case that we'd see this one again because of like I said the, the history behind it and the fact that it is O'Malley's only loss and that Vera who you know, like I mentioned, has had defeats in the past, but he has always kind of stuck around the top level of the bantamweight division. And, you know, even though he has suffered defeats sometimes right close to where he is about to get a title shot, he has also gotten quite big wins in the process around throughout his career in important times in his career. So, like I say, keep him around that of the top level of the bantamweight division. Like I say, coming off a, uh, a comfortable performance in his last fight versus Munoz, and, you know, he's. Uh, Bar that little kind of slip up, I suppose, to an extent against Sandhagen, which was a it was a close fight. You know, it was a split decision in the end. Possibly could have really been unanimous for Sandhagen, but it was still not a, a brutal kind of loss or anything like that. So in recent years, that's the the big defeat that he's had. And you know, Sandhagen's a quality opponent. And to be fair, if Vera wins, that then most likely sets up for Sandhagen to fight for the title against Vera. And so you know, it seems like everybody in the bantamweight division at the moment has got some sort of kind of backstory or grudge fight that they want to go and you know I suppose get their own back on and it seems like that we've got that here and you know like I say O'Malley I mean fighting in his home country but it doesn't really make much of a difference because Vera's used to fighting in America with the UFC and everything like that with the experience he's had in the UFC like I say fighting in the UFC since 2014 10 years in the UFC you know you, you it doesn't really seem like he has been around for that long uh, but like I mentioned he's been around for ages and if you go back and watch some of his old fights he looks so young <laughs> and you know he's he's come on along since then and it's it's good to see him now getting this title shot and also on this card people are comparing this for, uh, this card to that of UFC 300 this UFC 299 and um, I mean it's very stacked there's some great fights I'm only speaking about one of the fights on this but you know if you look at Venom Page versus Holland that's a great fight Almeida versus Blades that's a great fight uh, I believe Pedro Munoz is on this card. There's probably other fights that I'm missing. Oh, uh, Yudong versus Yarn. That's a great fight as well. I probably will think Yarn's going to win that one. But, you know, there's some big fights as well as this one, which I'm about to mention. So when people compare it to that of UFC 300, UFC 300 probably is better, but it's close. And it's, it's nice to see that there is a calibre, which I feel like there is being set in that of pay-per-views in the UFC. And... They were, they're wanting to keep to it and obviously there was kind of a little bit of annoyance around the UFC 300 and the main event of it but there is still that calibre there like I mentioned and they're living up to it to an extent at the moment stackness wise like I mentioned. Also on this card though Saint Denis versus Poirier great fight I think Saint Denis is going to win via TKO in round 3. He's a very exciting fighter. He can get drawn into fights quite a lot, so I feel like this probably will be an entertaining one while it lasts. But Poirier, he's not been active enough. He's not been even winning the best of fights. He only really fights the toughest of opponents. And I think somebody like who's got this kind of young mindset and this will to win, this youthfulness coming through in that of St. Denis, I think he's going to be able to outwork him. He's strong, he's got varied strikes, and he's got good movement. 
and I think he's going to be able to be too much with Poirier and I think Poirier's age possibly might show in this fight as well but I think Saint-Denis will be able to get the win credit to Poirier though for taking this fight I mean he, he doesn't fight often like I say Poirier but this one's a tough fight and yeah, like I say, credit to him for taking it. And St. Denis, I mean, there's not really much for Poirier to win in fighting St. Denis, to be completely honest. So, you know, like I say, credit to him for taking it. Uh, but going back to the main event, O'Malley as a fighter, I mean, we've seen he's accurate. He's got great time and he's got great power. He's got very good countering ability from that of a mid-range. Mid uh, and he proved that all just in that fight versus Sterling alone. But he's always had that as well. And with the mix of the good head movement, which he also utilised very well in that just one shot in general, which was a beauty of a shot which he caught Sterling with, it's... it's very technical, good striker. He can fight on the front or the back foot. Faints well. He has a good front inside body kick. He has varied kicks, but that front inside body kick I am a fan of. It does very much push back opponents, and he can maintain range quite well. He's patient, picks his shots nicely, fast, good footwork, very composed. Of course, he's very confident in his ability, and it means that you know he fights quite composed, quite relaxed, and even if he is on the back foot which he is quite a lot of the time he is composed picking his shots nicely and throwing in twos as well quite often a lot of the time he is pairing his shots together which is nice to see not just throwing out the one shot at a time and you know like I say that's nice to see he's also ground wise good at getting off his back and he proved that against Sterling a couple of times that Sterling had him you know pinned up against the cage or on the ground he got up to do it got up back onto his feet very nicely and Possibly you'd say that he can do that better than Vera, but there's not too many, I suppose, the things that I would say O'Malley does on the ground better than that of Vera. The negatives about O'Malley, I mean, overconfidence can definitely be a thing. He fights with the, the low guard and, you know, the hands low and everything like that. That overconfidence, he can definitely get caught with shots. It will be interesting to see if there's any demons, I suppose, to an extent, from the past of their first fight with Vera stopping O'Malley of course and that being like I mentioned the only fight which he's lost and uh, Vera's had experience losing and coming back from that so I don't feel like he's going to have any kind of demons or anything like that even if he goes and fights Sandhagen again but with O'Malley it's being his only loss we'll have to wait and see he's not overly physical he can be a little bit messy and close in my opinion. Sometimes his balance isn't amazing at times. Sometimes he'll throw a kick and it's happened a few times. He throws a kick and then he, he stumbles, he falls to the ground. And if you're against somebody like Vera who is quite explosive and can definitely pounce on you, then you can you, you shouldn't really be making them mistakes. He's not got a crazy high output either. And so, you know, points wise, Vera, he's not got a massive output sometimes, Vera, but when he does let his hands go, he does he does nicely as well. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see who will have the higher output out of the two. And sometimes he can be, in my opinion, a little bit too comfortable on the back foot. O'Malley and, you know, if he's against that constant pressure with him standing upright and being quite a big target to be hit, he can get hit. Uh, speaking about Vera as a fighter, though, he's got punishing groundwork. And when he's the one putting you to the ground, he's definitely going to make you work and go for a submission or just do very aggressive punishing ground and pound like I've mentioned and you know he's 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 known for doing that and he's done that a lot he's also got lethal head kicks knocked out quite a few opponents with them and very impressive head kicks and with the time and the accuracy that he also has and the variety in the shots that he sh he throws you could argue there's possible a bit more variety there for Vera than that of O'Malley he moves well possibly I don't know if it's quite as well as uh, O'Malley at times sometimes he's willing to plant his feet a little bit too much of course he has experience he's fast I don't know if he's faster than O'Malley but he's fast as well he can fight on the back foot comfortably as well he's got hard combinations that he throws he's patient as well he kind of improves throughout fights and he isn't really an overly fast starter similar to that to an extent of O'Malley so it will be intriguing to see who will be the one to be the one on the front foot early on the negatives about Vera, he's got a quite a low guard as well. He will keep his chin in the air, possibly a bit more than that of O'Malley. He's a slow starter, like I mentioned. He finds range sometimes difficult with his punches. He finds his range, he's accurate well with his kicks, but he does have to come inside. He doesn't have the big reach, and like I say, O'Malley can keep that of a reach. So if he can do that, then it might be difficult for Vera to get in. He sometimes like I mentioned struggles to get off his back a little bit and is comfortable to just kind of sit on there and in that fight versus Sandhagen especially in that first round he just kind of willingly sat on the on the ground and just throughout a good couple of minutes just let Sandhagen gain that early that early ground time control and 
you know, it's not really something that you want to be doing early on in a fight. I don't know if he was trying to save himself or what, but it didn't end up working in the end, obviously. He's willing to stay in bad positions, kind of like I mentioned there. If he can't get a rhythm, sometimes he can become a little bit hesitant and, you know, it doesn't always look the most comfortable. He has to come into range, like I mentioned, and he can be outworked a little bit at times, but I don't know, like I mentioned, who's going to be the aggressor out of the two in this fight. O'Malley is the favourite, but I think that's there is going to win via submission in round four. I think... You know, with his great jiu-jitsu Vera and his more varied attacks and his more physical approach, I think if he can get into the ground later on in the fight, if he can possibly, you know, evade some early shots which he might have to take from O'Malley, if he can get into the ground, the fact that, like I mentioned, O'Malley isn't overly physical, he could possibly get a submission and, yeah, I think he's going to do that later on into the fight and then he's going to win. And like I mentioned, he probably will end up going on the fight in Sandhagen next. I mean, of course, Tavalishvili more than deserves a title shot, and it's a little bit sad to see that he isn't really getting title shots. It's all good to see these rematches happen, and you know it does build that of a narrative. But Tavalishvili definitely deserves that of a title shot, and you know Nurmagomedov is also a great option for a title shot as well, and somebody also maybe in a couple of fights deserves one as well, or maybe in one more fight deserves one as well. But yeah, that is it for today's video. Hope you did enjoy. Like the video if you did indeed. Like the video, subscribe if you are new, and thanks for watching.